Hi, and welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. It's Wednesday, December 14th, and like every Wednesday, I'm joined by Mr. Al McMorty of BigL.com. I'm Ross Benjamin of RBWins.com, and this is our NFL betting edition. Today, we're going to be covering two NFL games for you with a couple of free pick winners. Al, how are you? Doing well. It's my favorite time of year. We've got the bowl games coming up uh, this weekend. So, you know, this is this is it, Ross. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know it's the NFL edition, but let's talk about this for a second. Uh, we're seeing a lot of line movements in the college football bowl games. Uh, unlike what we've had to deal with uh, maybe five or six years ago, even um, you have the transfer portal. Number one, you're, you're seeing kids jump uh at the end of the regular season, notably some quarterbacks. Uh, we're seeing some head coaching changes, which we see every year. We had an oddity in the Louisville and Cincinnati game where Scott Satterfield, who had coached uh, Louisville all year long, leaves Louisville to take the head coaching job at Cincinnati, and they're facing each other in a bowl game. Um, you know, again, there's numerous things to account for, and uh, I – the way I'm looking at it, and I'm interested to hear your take on this, Al, is when it comes to our 4D handicapping software, I don't know how much validity I could put in it right now on, uh, unless we're talking about the uh, big six, uh, you know, the college football playoffs and the uh, super six games uh, around New Year's. So uh, just your take well, on that. I mean, I, I think each, each element is different, right? Yeah. So when it comes to the coaching changes, I don't give a shit. I really don't. I mean, when you take a look at the data, you know, how teams do with coaching changes and how they do, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a wash. There's the teams don't underperform when they have coaching changes. So, you know, that's 50, 50. So for me, the coaching changes, I don't really care about, um, obviously the players, you know, especially when the guys say, I'm not going to play in the game that I do care about because that's going to move the point spread. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's an important thing for me is, you know, is the team going to be whole or not? Um, but but as far as the coaching goes, I don't, I don't really care about that. But it's, you know, it's. I remember when you and I grew up, the kids would have given their left arm to play in the ball game, and it's a completely sure. different story now. And that's, I think, that's the most disappointing thing is you get these kids saying eh, the ball game's not that important. I don't need to play. Yeah. Well, you know? when when we were kids, six and six teams didn't qualify for bowl games. <laughs> that's true. There are only uh, eleven had, bowl games, right? Yeah, so. exactly. It was a big deal back then. The reason why I brought up the head coaching changes is uh, twofold. And I get what you're saying, Al. And, and when you um, when you put it the way you put it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, the way I look at it, though, in this modern day period, uh, a coach leaves. It's so easy for these kids to jump to the transfer portal, especially if they know who the new head coach is going to be and it's a hire outside of the immediate coaching staff. That means there's going to be a complete turnover. Uh, the guy who recruited him is going to be leaving. Um, it, it, you'll see more kids. If you look at somebody's head coaching changes, you'll notice most of the kids jumping in the transfer portal. Uh, I would say the majority of them are within those head coaching changes. That's what I found when researching that. So that, to me, I don't know how you equate that into technical handicapping. Um, that's something that you have to consider, though, in my case, anyway. Uh, no, um, yeah, you do. I, I think I think really for us and our job, the implications, is the, mo the most important implication is that in the old days, I could handicap the games two or three weeks in advance and give them to the customers. Right. Right. In today's world, no. you go day by day because you don't know, you know, the injuries, who's going to play and all of that. So, you know, I remember in the old days and in, in, in the 1990s, I would be giving out my bowl games by now for yeah. New Year's. You know, I, I, I don't do that. anymore. You can't do it anymore. It's, uh, you know, with the line, you know, we've already seen just on the Friday and Saturday games, some of the line movements and they're not money for the most part. They're not money. Uh, money moves. No, no they're, they're not they're, money moves. There are it's, outside it's, outside things that's happened with, or I should say, within the team that's happened. Whether it be again a head coach moving on, or or, or an injury, or or more so 
uh, the transfer portals and kids opting out for the NFL draft. The reason why I brought up the Louisville situation is I do look at this time of year, unlike most of the regular season, is motivation. Uh, because as you well know, uh, Al, sometimes it's about the teams that want to be there and the teams that are uh, have underachieved throughout the course of the year. And now uh, their expectation level was so high going in and now they're playing in a minor bowl game and they're just not, I mean, the numbers may show that they should be a seven or 10 point favorite, but the motivation's not there. In Louisville's case, for example, the kids found out that Satterfield left via social media. Now you can't tell me that team's not going to be motivated to play against a team that he left for. So, you know, that's just my thought. Yeah, I don't know. For, for me, I always think the motivation thing's tricky. And I, yeah. I don't try to guess whether or not an 18 or 19 year old kid's going to be motivated. I just assume that they will be motivated. Yeah. Um, if they're in the game, uh, for, for, from the way I look at it these days, if, if you're not motivated to play, just don't, don't yeah. say they're not going to play in the game. But I think I always assume that two teams are going to be motivated. That's where I kind of part ways with a lot of handicappers who use that motivation thing for the ball games. I don't. Yeah. I, I'm going to assume both teams will be motivated, and I and I and that's how I approach my handicapping. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, success speaks volumes, and you've had a lot of it. Uh, I've had a lot of it during this uh, time of year. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's more than one way to skin a cat, Al, you know? Well, that's and, 100% true. Yeah. So, all right, let's get to our NFL free picks. Um, before we get to those free picks, just a reminder, you can find Al at BigL.com. And uh, not only Al is there, but 20 other great or 19 other great handicappers, including. Uh, and then you add Al, there's 20. Uh, <laughs> right, is that correct? That's correct. All right. Um, so Big L.com and Big L is uh, parentally right up there in all this, the uh, leaderboards, not only at his site, but across uh, the Internet, uh, all the major sites uh, out there when it comes to sports betting industry. Al, you want to tell the folks how you may have been doing of late. I know you're on the cusp of another NFL uh, winning season for the 11th year in a row. Is that correct? Would be, Yeah, it would be the 11th year in a row. I'm actually having a better year in college uh, this year than the NFL. I'm um, having another winning year in college. Um, last year was better in college than the NFL too. Um, I've won 22 out of the 30. So this would be 23 out of 31 football seasons. Um, I'm in the midst of my 23rd out of my 31st winning basketball season as well. Last two years in basketball, um, I forget the exact numbers, but it's, you know, up like 91.45 net games after the juice. Um, so, yeah, things are going good. And um, I think currently I'm on a 47 and 29 run my last 76. And I've got for Wednesday, I've got uh, seven plays right now. I've got six plays in basketball and um, I'm sorry, six plays in college basketball, one play in the NBA. And that's for tonight. Yeah, that's for tonight. Yeah. All right, and me, you can find me at rbwins.com, uh, college basketball since November 17th on a 22-11 and 11 run. It's pushed me over 60% for the season after a dismal 1-4 and four start. Um, NBA, 58% since uh, April 1st of last year. Uh, the NFL this year, had over 58%, been in the, uh, in the top 10 on all leaderboards, uh, whatever site I'm on. Um, and uh, what am I missing? NBA college uh, basketball combined 74 and 54 over the last 128. And that's also good for 58%. So a lot of money to be made. BigL.com and RBWins.com is where you can find our premium paid selections. All right, let's get to our NFL free picks. And Al, you're going to be covering the, um, it's a tough one because of the quarterback situation in Baltimore but the Ravens and the Browns, 4.30 Eastern time on Saturday. Yeah, uh, Baltimore's quarterback, uh, well, Lamar Jackson's out, right? So now, now you've got Tyler Hunt, Huntley. He He's in the concussion protocol. Um, he did, you know, go through practice uh, yesterday. Um, he's still in the protocol. We'll see if he, you know, comes out and plays on Saturday. I think he probably will play. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. The, the, these two teams played uh, earlier this season. Baltimore won that meeting 23-20. I actually had a big play on uh, Cleveland plus six and a half in that game. Uh, so now the Browns come home. They've got revenge from that three-point loss. I am quite aware that the Browns are eight and 28 with a push uh, when playing with revenge from a loss uh, earlier in the season when the, when the next game is at home. I, I am aware they're terrible with revenge when playing at home. 
but I still like Cleveland here. I just would, you know, like the Browns more if uh, Huntley does not play than if he does play, but that's where we sit. We don't know what's going to happen, but as of now, I, I, I like Cleveland minus the two and a half. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, we got a team with a losing record as a favorite against a team with a winning record in week 15. So I'm sure, uh, again, I haven't dabbled into this game, uh, but I am going to take a look at how teams in that situation do. And I'm sure you have already, if you've looked at this game. And I'm not going to press you for an answer on that. How's that? Uh, That's fine. All right. So I'm going to take a look at the Miami and Buffalo game. And again, Al, your pick so the, the, the folks know who you're taking again. Take Cleveland minus two and a half. But again, you know, I would, I would, I would like it better if you know Huntley uh, does not play. But um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. So uh, we're taking uh, Cleveland minus two and a half over Baltimore from Big L. All right. I'm going to take a look at the Miami Buffalo game right now. Buffalo is a seven point favorite. These teams met earlier this season, and Miami came away with a 21 19 win. But if you look inside the numbers, there, folks. Uh, Buffalo all gained the Dolphins by a wide margin of 497 to 212. And if my math is correct, that's by 285 yards in that game. Yet they failed to win the contest. Um, that snapped a seven game win streak for Buffalo over Miami. However, the Bills are five and all straight up in their last five at home against Miami, winning by 17.6 points per game. Uh, the Bills do come into this week riding a four-game win streak, while Miami, after looking so good for the majority of the season, has lost their last two and has only gained 308 and 219 yards in their last two games. Uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, Buffalo coming off that 20-12 to home win versus the New York Jets. They're now 6-0 and straight up and 5-1 and and against the spread at home, off a home win since 2020, those six wins coming by an average of 19 points per game. Uh, Buffalo does have a two-game lead over Miami in the AFC East. Miami holds the tiebreaker, so Buffalo does have some room for air. However, they are holding down the number one seed in the AFC. Uh, they could ill afford a loss uh, the rest of the way because Kansas City, who they're tied with, and they hold the tiebreaker over uh, the Chiefs, Right now, their last four games is the easiest schedule in football. Um, so they need to win out here. And Miami last week at the Chargers, uh, unseasonable 53-degree weather. This is just a, a joking side note here. It was 53 de degrees where L lives last week, unseasonably cold. And they had electric heaters on the sideline. It's going to be 22 degrees in Buffalo at game time on, on Saturday night. So good luck with that, Miami. I'm going to take Buffalo here, minus the seven over Miami. I just think they're a better team right now. I'm not going to get into the technical side of things, although I have a very good angle on this game. And uh, if you're interested, uh, just reach out to me uh, through the website. Uh, that's all I can tell you. All right. So, uh, Al, any final words? Oh, no. And, you know, you're, you're talking about the weather being 21 degrees in, in Buffalo. I see, looking at it, it's going to be three degrees in Green Bay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're we're here where we have to begin looking at the weather conditions um, for all of these games. Absolutely. And uh, especially as they apply to totals. And then especially if you have a warm weather site team going to a cold weather site team, that doesn't mean that they're not going to win the cold weather sure. or the warm weather site teams. But you still have to account for it. Yeah, um, in in this in this Miami game, the winds are going to be in the ten to fifteen mile per hour range. Usually, you know, I want to see if I if I'm going to let the weather impact me, you know, I need the winds at or above fifteen miles an hour. Um, this this doesn't look like it's going to get there. It looks like it's ten to fifteen mile yeah. per hour winds in Buffalo, but uh, um, but it, it is got to keep an eye on it. The weather conditions when they're twenty two degrees. Um, the last I looked, because of the 10 mile an hour winds that are predict nine to 10 mile an hour winds uh, being predicted, it'll feel like it's 13 degrees. So again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you can't get too carried away with that, but you have to account for it. Anyway, L, always a pleasure, my man. And uh, I'll talk to you before Christmas next week. And uh, I'd like to wish you uh, all the very best with your picks this coming weekend. Again, yeah. folks, you can find L at BigL.com. Find me at uh, rbwins.com. I'm also 
a uh, handicapper at one of Al's affiliate sites called PickAdvisor.com. You'll see all the standings there, the leaderboards and such, 20 other good handicappers at that site as well. So uh, again, folks, whatever your choosing may be, uh, some great great sites and uh, two good handicappers here that can make you a lot of money at this time of year. All right, good luck, God bless, and take care from Big L and Ross.